Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a customer engineer focused on management technologies. Today's discussion will be part one of a series focused on endpoint protection in Microsoft Intune, which of course is part of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. This will be a very short introduction, really with the goal of providing context for what we're going to cover in the, uh, in the rest of the series. Here's our very brief agenda. Just want to talk about what endpoint protection is, why we care about it, and, um, and really then uh, move on, right? So as before we even get there, why are we talking about this, right? We're talking about this because many of these items uh, are built in to your Windows operating system. Or in the case of Intune, we also can manage certain ones of these on a Mac OS and they're built in there. And so being able to know that you can manage those built-in capabilities, take advantage of those built-in capabilities, have awareness of those built-in capabilities uh, is, is something that just makes sense. There's potential cost savings that go along with that. If you have certain licensing, you may own these already. And instead of paying for additional product, uh, maybe this is what you need. Or maybe there's some niches where that will work in role uh, 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 scenarios where uh, this would come uh, to be. Uh, there's certainly opportunities for role-based access controls to be brought to bear to really highlight these security features and make them available to people who otherwise would not need to be evolved in looking at the, um, the capabilities in the Intune console. So what is endpoint protection? Well, endpoint protection is a combination of different capabilities that come together to provide a, a full suite of uh, security solutions. Now, this series is not intended to talk about every single one of these and describe them in detail. Certainly there will be some of that to be able to understand what you're able to manage with Intune, but this is not an exhaustive session to talk about the full details of every single one of these. You'll see them, yes. You'll see me set them up, for sure, uh, but there's certain things that you hopefully will want to know more about that will not be covered uh, in these sessions, right? So the endpoint protection capabilities that are part of Intune as of this recording are on the screen. So we have security baselines, and this is in the order of the console. We have security baselines. Basically, security baselines are going to provide defined uh, pre-configured settings that are configured from Microsoft IT and partners with recommended configurations for the various pieces that are part of the baseline, right? Uh, these are updated regularly and, and things that you can manage through the life cycle yourself. So it's a good idea, whether you use these or not, to be aware of what these settings are and compare them to your own settings. Security tasks is a section of the console that really it will only light up when you integrate Intune with Microsoft Defender for endpoint protection, which also is referred to as Security Center. And so when you have integration with Security Center, uh, there are certain vulnerabilities that can be flagged for remediation in Intune. When that happens, they show up in Intune in the, uh, in the security tasks section, and then admins of Intune can either accept that or reject that, uh, can work on it, can remediate it, whatever the case may be, um, and then send that back when it's completed to Security Center for uh, closeout. Right? Again, requires integration with Defender for Endpoint Protection, which is also known as Security Center. Uh, antivirus. So being able to create and manage antivirus policies and deploy those to the environment. That's one that also works uh, with Mac OS. Uh, disk encryption. So uh, you may have heard that uh, MBAM, which is a common management solution for Windows devices and BitLocker, will be deprecated. Uh, at some point. Right now, uh, that date is April 14th of 20, uh, 2026 is when that will happen. Um, don't wait for that, right? You need to find an additional solution so that you have something in place when that happens. This disk encryption also supports macOS. So on Windows side, it's BitLocker. On the macOS side, it is uh, File Vault. Firewall uh, also supports Mac OS, so here's where you can create and manage firewall policies related settings. You can create rules, 
and, uh, and, and so on, right? Event detection and response is the part of, of the Intune console uh, configuration where uh, we can manage onboarding and offboarding of devices to Defender for endpoint protection. So we, again, Security Center. So when you want to leverage Security Center in your environment to uh, track different different vulnerabilities and security configurations and so on, you need to onboard devices to that process to to the security center portal and this section helps you do that and let me also say that some of these some of these pieces here as well i mentioned support windows and mac os all of them support windows and then some of them also support what's called uh, tenant attach where you can actually use this uh, intune or better said the endpoint manager console to define and deploy settings to your configuration manager clients that are present in the endpoint manager console because of tenant attach, right? Then we have account protection. So account protection is that section that allows you to set up configurations for Windows Hello for Business, uh, security keys, credential guard, uh, device compliance. Now, this one is one we'll touch on in the series. We are not going to go in depth on this in the series. Device compliance is that portion that lets you define and manage compliance rules. The reason we're not going into depth on that is there already is a series that I've recorded on compliance settings specifically. It's a five-part, as I recall, series that really dives deeply to help you understand what's available here. Same kind of thing with conditional access. I'll show this to you in the series uh, briefly. Allows you to define rules for whether or not access to your corporate environment and resources is granted or denied. I'm not going to go in great detail. Uh, I'll certainly show you what it is. Not going to go in great detail because I do have plans to discuss this in depth in a separate series. Not done yet, but in, I plan to do it. And then lastly, this Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Integration. So I mentioned there's a few of these uh, where you need to have Intune integrated with uh, Defender for Endpoint uh, protection, and so also known as Security Center. And so this section of the console allows you to do that integration. There's also some settings here for uh, MAM and some Android management and some different things uh, that are out there. So these are the capabilities that we will talk about uh, in this series. So uh, why do we really care about this, right? Well, we care because again, it's integrated. You have this, it's part of your management solution if you have uh, Endpoint Manager, right? Uh, it's part of your OS if you have Windows or Mac OS. And so it just makes sense to uh, take a look at it, right? The additional value that it can bring to your environment if you already have things like Intune, you may be able to uh, reduce infrastructure. Um, and again, uh, support for Mac OS in at least some cases. So that's really as far as I'm going to take this introduction. Stay tuned for the rest of the series, and we will see you next time.